Hi, and welcome to this video on the sheath bend. This knot here is very similar in structure to the bowline, so much so that I actually thought about doing a common video for the two of them. But then I realized that it will be too much uh, to talk about, be having variants and other stuff. So since they are very similar in structure, they, there exists some common ways of tying them. But the bowline has some restrictions since it's it's a loop, so it's not too broad, so it puts some other restrictions on it. The sheath bend then, it is used for joining two pieces of rope, since it's a bend. They can be of different thickness and rigidity. It can be quite quick to tie it. It can be also really slow if you don't know how to tie it quickly. The real benefit of this, as with the bowline, is that it unties really easily after it's been uh, pull, pulled really tight. So if I try and... pull really tight here, you can see that or when, when if you have seen the overhand knot video, you can see that I had trouble untying that with the fisherman's knot, fisherman's band. Uh, but this, you can see that it looks like life jacket here. Just to turn it the way the way around the other way around and break the neck of it. So you just push here and then it's really easy to untie. However, it can slip if you have um, low friction ropes and that way, in that case, you should tie stopper knots. And then you might argue, well, if I might, if I'm going to tie stopper knots, I might as well just choose a better knot. Well, the thing is, yes, um, I, I was thinking as well, but then I realized that if you make a stop knot here, this stop knot doesn't carry the weight of the knot, it just hinders it untying. So this stop knot is fairly easy to untie, even after you have uh, put a lot of load on the knot. And you can also mitigate some of the slipping. Um, by tying a double, so instead of just having one round turn, you go twice round. So it looks like this. So this is a double sheet bend. Okay, so how to tie it? Well, there are five ways that I know of tying this knot. So we'll start with the common way to learn. Is you start with a bite like this. This is this would be the thick rope if you were tying with a um, so if you would tie it together with a smaller one, this would be the thick end. So you go up, and then around all of it, and then underneath the red hair, like this. So you should be careful also to to uh, make these two ends, the work two working ends, point at, in the same direction from the loop. Okay, so once more, you start with a bite like this, you take the thinner rope, up, under or round, and then underneath itself. Not like this, because that would be, in this case, a thief knot, but like that. So this is a sheet bend. So that's one way. Now, I'll just switch ropes again because of aesthetics. Um, so, the other way is what you usually learn when you learn to tie a bowline. This is a story. Um, some story, some versions is with the princess and a dragon, and some are with the rabbit and a fox. And this is I'm a scout, and St. George is the patron saint of scouting. I'll just have always learned the uh, princess and dragon. So you start with the princess here by the lake and it's important that the she stands with her feet in the lake so to say so the princess or the okay so the working end is above the standing part here so it goes like that and then the dragon comes up from beneath the lake wraps its head around the princess like so and then tries to drag her into the lake to eat her but the princess struggles and fights, and the 
dragon fights. And then you have a sheet band. So once more. So you start with a lake like this on a princess. The dragon comes up from beneath the lake, grabs the princess, and down into the lake again. Okay, I just once more because this is basis for a lot of the next versions how you can tie it. So start with the lake, up, around, and then down. And it's important that these ends end up on the same side of the knot. Otherwise you increase the risk for slipping. So that's the second way. The third way would be to have you cross the ends like this. Then you take the, you see that the white here is underneath. You take and you do like that. And if you're observant here you can see that this is a lake and uh, dragon situation here. You just grab the princess and then down again. So basically, it's a, it's a way to set up the whole uh, grabbing of the princess situation. So that's one way. I'll just show it quickly once more. Like that. So up, grab, down. OK. So that's a version. The next one is how I would teach um, tying a bowline. So you take, when tying a sheet band, you take this, the thinner part like this, I believe it is, yeah, the thicker part in your right hand, or if you're left hand, you have to kind of mirror the whole situation. You cross, like that, you pinch, and then you try to keep hold of that the white end here. And as you can see you have created the whole dragon and princess situation again and then down. And you, you need longer ends than this. But So once again start crossing like that. Pinch and twist and then you grab the princess and down. So these, the ways I've shown you now, basically build on the lake and princess uh, kind of situation. There exists a, a third way, oh, fifth way, fifth way now, in which you tie an overhand noose. Okay, so, and you don't pull through the uh, working end, you pull through the standing part like that, so you get a overhand noose, then you put the other one through like that, and then you keep hold and pull through, and here you have a sheet bend again. I would advise against this. This can be useful in some particular situation when tying a bowline, but for the sheet bend I would advise against this because I have a hard time figuring out and I suspect you as well. If you put this end through the wrong way, I think this is the wrong way, yeah. You end up with the ends on opposite sides of the knot and that's what you do not want. But you can tie it this way. If, you, if you're able to consistently tie it correctly, I mean, I see no, see no point in not tying it this way. It's quite easy like that. And this is also quite an important point, the last point I'll get to. It's important how you tie this knot. If you tie it threadwise and then you, you try to pull it, I mean it gets, gets to this point, which will not hold, of course, because this is not even a knot in, with the black end here. Okay, so that's a sheath band. So remember the black here would be the thick uh, rope, and the white one would be a thinner rope, so I just finish with that again. See if I can manage. And also this is, as you can see now, it's quite hard to do it this way when you have a, a very thick rope here.
because it doesn't really pull through. Okay, so this is how you would tie it with a thinner and a thicker rope. And of course, if you have a lot thinner, you would be well to do double, or even you can make a triple. I can see now. See no point in not doing a triple here. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video here on knots and ropes.